Good morning and welcome to this uh, series of epidural lectures. And this is epidural part three. We will go into science behind epidural dosages. Every time I talk anything on academics, I put a big salute to the legendary teacher of two centuries, Professor Ravi Shankar. So here I want to declare something. Certain most of the things are evidence based, and a few are experience based. So can we calculate the number of regimen or the number of doses? It is almost equal to the number of anesthesiologists who practice top-ups. Everyone has got his own regimen. Everyone has got his own top-up regimens. Why it is like this? Because I think we feel understanding the science behind this. It is simple, but how are we doing that? Now we go to the general rules. If we go to the general rules, 0.5% bifivacaine is needed for anesthesia. If you are planning to give an epidural for anesthesia purpose, that is complete denervation, complete sensory denervation, we need to use 0.5% bifivacaine or a minimum of 1.5% lignocaine with or without adrenaline. So if you go down below that, a complete sensory denervation may not be there. Analgesia is different. 0.25 or 0.2 is needed for analgesia. If you want to go down further, you may need to add narcotics. Yes, I have given 0.125 and 0.0625 and all means you may need to add narcotics for quality pain relief. Now, if you see here, the dermatomal level is C8, cardioaxillator is completely blocked. L23, knee surgeries. T7, AS thoracotomies. T4 is appendicectomy, ampere abdominal surgeries. Yes, this is what is the basic dermatomal level we need to have for different types of surgeries. Here you see 2% chloroquine, lignocaine, vipivacaine, ropivacaine. This is what commonly used. Lignocaine, vipivacaine and ropivacaine. Sometimes now levopivacaine. Now you can see the onset is 10 to 15 minutes for lignocaine. While it is 15 to 20 minutes, slightly prolonged onset and a prolonged duration for bipivacaine and ropivacaine. Now, classically, we can see here, there is not much of change in the duration. This is what is needed. The duration is not much. Yes, there are certain blocks if we give very high concentration. For example, 0.75% bipivacaine, the duration may increase, but here, the drug depends upon the duration. The lignocaine means this much. Bipivacaine means this much. Just because you have been 0.5% bipivacaine in epidural, it is not going to act for five and a half hours. Duration is simply defined as two segment dermatomal recession. Now, if you have given the drug for to level achievement is T4, after two and a half hours, it has come to two six. Then it is, that is what is called the duration. In simple definition. But you need to give top up before that. This is what is important. Time to see if you give after 260 minutes or three and a half hours, then your two segment resistance will come. Your top up may not work ideally as we need or as we think. Recommended top up time. Recommended complete resolution is 360. While top of time may be 320, 120 for BPV again. That means two to two and a half hours you may need to top up. Who is telling this? I am not telling. Jan Kovic's regional anesthesia, nerve blocks in anesthesia and brain therapy. So, this is about the recommended time for top up. Now we go to what is the dose we need to top up. If you have put lumbar epidural, we need to give 1.5 ml per segment. And if we need caudal, we need 2 ml per segment. If we need thoracic, we need 0.7 ml per segment. How, how many segments you have to block? Yes, we know that if we put in thoracic, we need to block 0.7 ml per segment. So how many segments we need to block? For lumbar epidurals, segments are counted from fifth sacral segments. Coxygel segments are excluded. Thus, Blockade of all segments, including the second thoracic. 
would be counted as 27, 21 segments, 5 sacral, 5 lumbar and 11 thoracic. That means T2 will be blocked. 21 segments, if you are putting here, see here, I am not telling this. Epidural analgesia pass per March. Segments were counted according to this. This is what it tells. There should also be a scientific basis because in the back at the L2, L3 level, the dermatome is T11, T12. Suddenly it jumps to L1 leg. So here we should understand just because we are giving a, we are giving a surgery here, it does not mean it is sacral nociception. See here, this is sacral, this is lumbar, this is thoracic, upper thoracic and lower thoracic. We need to block for esophagectomy, pancreatectomy, hepatic resection here, or we need to block here for knee surgeries and probably hip surgeries. Now, cases only under epidural. If you want to give total abdominal hysterectomy, yes, we need to give T6 level. Catheter is in L3, L4. What did Brahmach tells T6 lower 5 segments, number 5 segments, we need to give 14 segments. So 1 or 1 1.5 ml means we need to give 18 ml. Clear. Just we need to count like this and give 18 ml to give complete get anticipation. We need to start with lignocaine and adrenaline and the action is faster. Relaxation is better. 5 ml aliquots every 5 minutes and not 25 minutes. We need to watch in between in 5 minutes what it's. We need to watch motor block, BP fall, consciousness and pulse rate for the side effects of our epidurals. Volume is the key factor in determining the height of the block. T10, adjust the guidelines for shorter pairs. This is all about a normal patient. For example, a 5 feet 8 inch or 5 feet 7 inch patient. If you have only a 5 foot patient, yes, we need to adjust that. It does not mean, yes, for example, we are giving thiopentone 3 to 5 milligrams. Sometimes we give only 1.5 ml per kg. We are adjusting because this patient is in slightly hemodynamic imbalance, all these things. Yes, we just because your dose is 3 to 5 milligram per kg of thiopentone, we are not giving for all patients. Similarly, this is the dose, 1.5 ml per segment. If we want to block till T6, we may need to give 18 to 20 ml for a normal height patient. But it depends upon how far is the patient's height and according to the situation where we are operating or where we are giving the block. This is not told by me. This is by Admir Hendrix, textbook of regional analysis. Now we go fracture tibia. Tibia is... With the tourniquet, it is T10. Without tourniquet, we need L1 is enough. L1 means L look of 5 segments, sacral look of 5 segments, 10 segments we need to block, 1 ml per segment, approximately 10 ml we give. 10 ml is the volume that is needed. But if you want to give anesthesia, you give 0.5% If you want to give analgesia, you come down on the concentration, not on the volume. If you want to reach a height, you need to give a good volume with tourniquet, without tourniquet. Keep the epidural at L3, L4 and usually T10 to T12 is adequate. Many people say epidural push, 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 it will reach T10. No, this is, happens only in 5 to 10 percent of the patients. Don't push the epidural much. That has been already told very clearly in the earlier videos. Nephrectomy, cystectomy T4, ESWL T6, open prostatectomy, urethral stone T8. Yes, we know all these things. The surgery, these are the levels which needed. T10 level means what is the volume? Thoracic, two segments. Lumbar, to five segments. Sacral, to five segments. 12 segments we need to block. 1 to 1.5 segment per ml per segment. That means 13, 14 ml of 0.5 percent bupivacaine we need to do for narcheectomy because that is what is needed for analysis. 7 ml of 2 percent lignocaine with adrenaline in C7 interspace may be enough for radical mastectomy. Yes, because 
it is 0.7 ml per segment one. We need to block 10 segments means we need to give 8 ml or 6 ml, 7 ml. If the second dose is given at the appropriate time, yes, maybe reduced to half. If you are giving bupivacaine, one and a half later, hours later, you are topping up. Yes, we need to give at least half the dose. But if you are giving after six hours, there is no meaning in giving half the dose. The concentration remains the same. Yes, if it is surgical anesthesia. Now you are going epidural. The hysterectomy is going on. Two hours later, you are topping up. Yes, we need to top up again with 0.5% bupivacaine, not a lower concentration because we are topping up for a surgical anesthesia. We are not topping up to, for an analgesia purpose. Top up with 0.5% bupivacaine only if it is an Radical hysterectomy, L4 is needed. I gave 18 ml of 0.5% bupivacaine. Top it up with 10 ml of bupivacaine at 2 hours. You see, see of the dose, 0.5%. If the co is going to get over, yes, the surgeon said it's going to get over at 3 and a half hours, then I can switch over to 10 ml of 0.2% bupivacaine to establish adequate post-operative analgesia. What is segmental epidural? Target the nociceptive site. Nociception, eh? where is the noxious stimulus? Where is the surgical stimulus? But legs are not paralyzed. It means there is no segmental lumbar epidural. This is what I want to clear. If you give L3, L4, some of the sacral segments may be blocked. Some of the thoracic segments may be blocked. It's very difficult to establish segmental lumbar. Likely to block sacral segment. Segmental, thoracic and are possible. Center the epidural drug deposition. For example, modified drug ma ma radical mastectomy. Keep it in T3. Modified mastectomy, chance versus rectus abdominis plaque. Keep it in around T6. Partial mastectomy, T4, T5. Yes, this is if you center it, then you can give segmental epidural. Yes, we can give polycystectomy, thyroid, thymectomy, so many drugs. Umbilical hernia repair. The incision nociceptive site is T10. So insert the catheter as T9, T10. You are centering your nociceptive stimulus. Now you see total rag. I put an epidural catheter in T6, T7, T, T5, T6. Now the road radical gastrectomy, the surgical incision is from here to here. Now from T5 to T8 or T9. 8 ml of 0.5% bupivacaine was given 2 to 3 times and the surgery got over within continuous thoracic epidural analysis. Now I have already told even though this looks like a lumbar thing, sometimes the incision site may be T11, T12, L1. This is what I have told. So what I did was I put a catheter here or around T9, T10 and I gave 10 ml so that they could finish this laminectomy with segmental continuous lumbar epidurals. This patient was able to dorsiflex the foot on call. The loading peak dose of epidural anesthesia is 10 to 10 ml increments. Wait for 3 to 5 minutes. The block is incomplete for so many minutes, don't waste time. Inject 1 quarter, 1 third, 15 minutes after the initial bonus. Epinephrine and bicarb can increase the onset, speed up the onset, enhance the quality, but narcotics will improve the quality. Give up top of dose at appropriate time. A continuous infusion is an alternative to bolus dosing. It has the advantage of chemodynamic stability and it can be continued for post op treatment. Now you see again umbilical hernia pack. Now we need to block here. So T4 to T12, maybe a peritoneal removal can be painful if there is T4, T6 is not blocked. Now we have put an epidural as T9. We need to block nine segments, T4 to T12, 0.7 ml per segment or 7 ml is enough. 2% lignocaine is adrenaline. Yes, they can go ahead. The limbs man move. This is what is called segmental thoracic epidural. Now the same surgery, if you have put in lumbar epidural catheter, Yes, the sacral segments are likely to be blocked. We need to count for T6 level so that we may need to give some 15, 16 ml or 18 ml to get a level of T6 like here 
so that surgery can be comfortable. Thyroidectomy, C71 catheter, difficult to do epidurals in C3 and all. So give the drug and we expect to move up. Don't push the epidural catheter and expect to move up. 9 ml of 2 percent lignocaine. That's because we need to block around 10 segments. Seven, 8 or 9 ml is enough. Now we have a bilateral inguinal hernia. T8, T9, catheter. The surgical incision is around T4, TL1. So around 7 segments or 8 segments. Yes, 0.7 ml. We can give a 6 ml or a 5 ml per hour infusion. Bilateral hernia. If your catheter is here, if your catheter is low down, yes, this may not work. You may need to increase up to 9 ml per hour. That is what I have told. The same surgery, catheter is T9, catheter is L4. Post-operative pain relief, we don't need 0.5% bupivacaine. We need less motor block. 0.2% ropivacaine is ideal. 0.125% if you come down very much, yes, we need to add fentanyl. Epidural infusion means that's it. See, for example, just because we have started on an epidural infusion, that does not mean we don't need to give paracetamol, ituralac, or some opioids. We may need to complete the satisfaction with some sort of IV ituralac or a diclofenac apostery or an IV paracetamol or an injection pramidol, IV General rule, bupivacaine, 8 ml per hour or 0.25%, I always add fentanyl. When to add fentanyl? Always we want to decrease the concentration of local anesthetics. Better to add fentanyl than other narcotics because it is little risky to give morphine as an infusion. Morphine, if you want to give, give a single dose that is enough. Top up with lignocaine or bupivacaine alone. Now, what I do in major pelvic surgeries, you have put an L3, L4 catheter. 16 ml bupivacaine, 32 ml saline, 2 ml fentanyl. This makes 50 ml syringe. 16 ml bupivacaine, 32 ml saline plus 2 ml fentanyl. Start at 10 ml per hour and decrease if needed. I always add injection pituralac and parastamol. Sometimes tramadol and 10, 50 milligrams IV twice a day. Maybe fentanyl going maybe less. If you have a T10 catheter, this 10 ml may come down to 5 to 6 ml with fentanyl, but tramadol and parastamol as the same. So this is what is needed. L4 catheter, we need to block some 16 segments. Where the catheter is here, we need to block it less. This is not my dosage. This is also my dosage. They don't have ideal infusions for non-pregnant patients. So many books, if you say, they don't have ideal infusion doses. Now we have a gastrectomy. Dosis option is from T4 to T10, seven segments. If you have a catheter here, T5, T6, the exit of a T7 dermatome. Need 6 ml for the first dose, maybe 3 to 7 ml, 4 ml for the second dose. Better to start if you have topped up. 4 ml is enough. If you have a T6 catheter and if you are operating on T7 to T9 gastrectomy, 4 ml is enough per hour. Or sometimes 3 ml top up is enough. 3 ml top up of 0.25% is enough. But if you have same surgery, or a similar surgery done with L3, L4 catheter, totally it is different. Now, if you have a total knee replacement, total knee replacement, now the nociception is L2, L3, L1. L1 is needed. So, L1 means 10 segments. 15 ml may be the first dose, 1 to 1.5. Thereafter, we can come down. Probably, I use in total knee replacement, epidural infusion around 6 ml per hour, followed by some keter like and this thing. Slowly, if the patient is fast, I now put a saphenous nerve catheter followed by a single short spinal. Epidural dexmed. Yes, if you have an abdominal cancer surgery, 
If you have a catheter is TH, 6 ml is enough. If you have a catheter in L4, 9 to 10 ml is enough. Lumbar catheter for hip surgery is 6 ml per hour. Lumbar catheter for abdominal surgery is 9 to 10 ml per hour. Volume is needed for the spread. Decrease that and use the advantage of differential block. But how much to decrease the concentration? 0.2% bipivacaine, ropivacaine is okay. But if you want to decrease more, we may need to add some narcotics. Some people may say, I use only give 8 ml of 0.1% bipivacaine. It is working for me. Yes, it will work. Now you understand the perception. The hysterectomy done, here it is. The skin incision is put here or here. The phenan steel incision is T9. Here if you want to add their dose to peritoneum and all, the nociception is a minimum of T10. But they also operate here. They cut the uterosacrals. All these things nociception. So this is sacral nociception. This is tissue and rectus abdominal nociceptive here nociception here. So if you give some 6 ml of 0.125%, this is likely to get blocked, but not this. We will get some relief, but this is not complete deafferentation. We may need to use 10 ml, yes, to have a complete deafferentation of T12, T9. Yes, with that is what is complete deafferentation. That is why we have put an epidural. We want complete deafferentation. We don't need to block only the uterosacrals and all these things. The epidural works, but the analgesia of time may be similar to one shot of intravenous cuterlac. Is that the reason for which we have put an epidural? No, we want complete deafferentation. We may need to block the T10 level. Yes, we need to give so much of those. Yes, for fracture of medial maneuvers, sacral segments is blocked, even if you give 6 ml, 5 ml. But if you want to give skin incision, that is saphenous nerve, we need to block a little higher. Post-operative nociception is different if you fix a fractured bone. Fracture, already bone is fractured. There was severe pain pre-operatively only. We have fixed it, for example, PFN. For example, fracture tibia. For example, interlock nailing of the femur. The post-operative nociception is different. But that is not the same if we do a total knee replacement or a tendon repair where we cannot compare with warm orthopedics. The pain is intense. We need to be a front completely in TKR and THR. Epidural infusion in pediatrics is 0.1 ml per kg per hour and even the neonates it's 0.2 ml per kg per hour. I am not very much experienced in this. Epidural top up in anesthesia after failed labor epidural dose 12 ml of 0.125% anesthesia. 12 ml of here you see 2% or 1.5%. If you are not bothered to give 10 or 20, 12 ml to achieve a satisfactory anti nociception in labor pain, that is only 40% of the dose. Why are we afraid in giving 16 ml to do give an adequate anesthesia for an hysterectomy? Count of segments that is from sacral. How much ml per segment? 1 to 1.5 for lumbar, 0.7 for thoracic, and 0.6 to 0.7 for cervical. Anesthesia and analgesia, difference in concentration. What is segmental epidural? With the lower limbs are not paralyzed. Infusions and change of doses. Yes, we need little come dose, less dose come down. And also the hemodynamic instability is less. The rules are always the same. Anesthesia means 0.5. Analgesia means 0.2. Infusion less likely to cause hemodynamic imbalance. Target the nociceptive site, hysterectomy and 7 ml. Yes, where is the nociceptive input? There are two types of nociceptive input, sacral and thoracic. Are we targeting only the sacral? This is what we should put in mind. There are innumerable anesthetists and there are whims and fancies. But understand the signs between where is where epidural. Just because we have put in 20 ml, 20 
centimeters inside the catheter, the catheter is not going to be in T4. Understand, don't push the catheter more than 5 centimeters. It is likely to malfunction. So, catheter TPSD in L1, when your catheter is don't low like this. Yes, fix the catheter at 5 centimeters. It may go up or down. Yes, understand the science behind those section. Please do cases with epidural alone to understand what is the nociception and what is the dose name block. Thank you all.